You're watching the Youth's View International Youth Month talk show with guests Colin Fagan, Lisa Hanna, Arnaldo Brown, and host Raymond Price. The topic for today is the national debt and the IMF, how they affect the youth of Jamaica. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, young people of Southeast St. Catherine, and more specifically, the Portmore Heart Academy. We are here this afternoon doing a particularly unique, innovative intervention in terms of getting youth views out during this political campaign. The program is called Youth View, and our guests this evening are the Member of Parliament for Southeast St. Catherine, Mr. Colin Fagan. Sitting to his left is the opposition spokesperson on youth and culture. She's also the Member of Parliament for Southeast St. Anne, Ms. Lisa Hanna. And to Lisa's left is Analda Brown, who is the candidate for the People's National Party in the recently established constituency of East Central St. Catherine. Good evening, Analdo. Welcome, and welcome to you as well, our audience. Now, it is being said, literally left, right, and center, that young people now want to be involved in a UNO politics. Uh, youngsters under the age of 13, for the most part, view persons such as your panelists and I as people who have a fixation on uh, the system of politics, which increasingly many young people are standoffish or apathetic towards and believe that politics and therefore politicians are corrupt, are in it for themselves, do not have the cares and the concerns of the young people at heart. But on the other side of the equation, young people must continue to recognize their role and responsibility in keeping those persons who participate in the political process responsible and accountable to their mission and their role as your representatives. So we're going to start this evening's discussion, or today's discussion, with the lone female on the panel, who, as I said before, is Lisa Hanna, no stranger to us. Let us welcome Lisa Hanna to the program. Thank you. How are you doing this afternoon, Lisa? I'm good. Thanks and very much. Thank good you for joining us. Of course, it is uh, no coincidence that we're doing this during the month of November, which is classically observed across the world as Youth Month. All right. And uh, start us off from there. Your take, Youth Month, your opinions as to the state of the youth sector in Jamaica. Well, the truth is the state of the youth sector as it relates to the budgetary allocations from the government are woefully inadequate. And what I think you, our youth need to recognize that even though it is Youth Month and the government really has not promulgated any serious programs as it relates to activities that engage our youth, what our youth need to recognize is that they make up the largest percentage of our population. Persons under 35 make up 55% of our population. What it therefore means is that it is this group of individuals who will be responsible for carrying our country forward for the next 10, 15, 20 years. And they will be responsible for repaying the IMF, the Chinese loan program. They'll be responsible for the growth industries that are going to be required to bring development into the country. What concerns me as a country is that systematically over the last four years, our youth budgets and the allocations have been declining. If you look at the NYS, for instance, that budget has been cut by over 50%, closer to 60%. If you look at the enrollment at heart, um, back in 2007, 2008, we've moved from about 5,200 enrolled persons to about 1,200 persons who are now enrolled in heart today. So th as it relates to young people, even though we say our youth are important, it's not clear that this administration gives the kind of credit that our youth deserve, not only in terms of um, its spend, on training activities because there, currently there is no new money allocated for youth training and development. If you look at both the capital and recurrent expenditure for this year, what is allocated on a per capita basis for every young person in this country is $165. Of the $1.9 billion allocated for the youth ministry, only $83 million, or 4%, was actually used for youth development programs. 
If only $83 million has been invested in the youth of Jamaica, then this means that each young person gets only $165 per year. This is equal to just about 45 cents per day. Let, let's not move too quickly from that statistic. We recently, in one of the main daily newspapers, the editorial presented another interesting statistic that every Jamaican, which would include the 55% under the age of 30, is it 30 or 35? You could, I would say 30. Under the age of 30 currently owe 600,000 Jamaican dollars. Correct. And you're saying that the administration invests $165. $165. 165. 165. So uh, a, a rough mathematical calculation as we go to the Member of Parliament on the panel is that while required to pay back as at today $600,000, only $165 have been invested into the education and training process that will equip young people to be able to attract the kind of high paying jobs or create through entrepreneurship the kinds of jobs that will pay, allow them to be able to pay back $600,000 in their lifetime and it's well, $600,000 plus ask, counting. What you should ask each young person who is here is if they've brought their $600,000 because that's what you currently owe in terms of debt based on the debt moving 60% since 2007. Uh, hands and it's, up. it's a real reality. How many of you have brought your $600,000? or have $600,000 deposited $600, in a savings account. You have $600,000 deposited anywhere? Well, that's currently what you owe as a citizen of this country. In 2007, the national debt was $950 billion. It is now $1.67 trillion. This is a whopping 72% increase in just four years. Uh, going to Member of Parliament, Colin Fagan, you are an MP for a constituency in Portmore. Many of the youngsters who attend this institution are your constituents. In terms of the state of play within the environment for young people to find developmental options, how do you view the opportunities that exist and what are some of the areas as em uh, of emphasis? that you look on as a member of parliament? Well, I'm very happy that this program is in the constituency of South East St. Catherine. Um, in fact, this is one of the largest uh, of communities within uh, anywhere in this part, this part of the world. Um, and, and you would recognize, I suppose, the, um, you would recognize that in, in such a community like this, there would be thousands and thousands of young people all over the, 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 the community. Um, here at the academy, um, there, there is a, a program where that deals with, with, with building skills. And across from here, we have the community college, um, dealing mainly with, with, with academics, um, persons wanting to move into the university um, at their endeavors. But the, the, to, to, get, to go back to get back to your point or question in respect to how do how do do we see the development taking place for these young people? I would want to say, um, given the scenario just brought to, to attention uh, in respect to how many how much persons owe, um, you realize that we are going down in a ditch. And um, this is not the end of the road because we have an IMF program that we are looking at that government um, has not gotten to that point where they are very clear to the Jamaican people where we are. Right. And, and so um, even what we owe now is going to be greater by the time we get to that point of, of dealing with the IMF. You make an, an interesting point, Mr. Fagan, and it certainly there will be uh, opportunities for the members of the audience here during the interactive period to pose their own questions. And w another question that we'll pose to them as well is their own level of awareness as to what is the IMF first and foremost. And there's a lot of talk as to the IMF agreement. Some don't want it discussed and others want it discussed either way. It should be familiar. The three letters IMF should be familiar to many youngsters and certainly youngsters in your area and your age group. 
and we would want to hear from you as to your own understanding of that agreement, how important it is to you, and how do you think it is helpful to the future of Jamaica. At which point, let me introduce again Analda Brown, who is the candidate for the People's National Party in the newly established East Central St. Catherine constituency. Uh, listening to Lisa Hanna and Colin Fagan, the hills to climb for young people are quite high, quite impressive. How do you, as a young and prospective representative in interacting with young people, get them to a position where their hopes and their aspirations are still maintained at the high levels that young people should feel hopeful and feel aspirational? Well, I think one of the things that um, has to be done is to put into context the circumstances in which we find ourselves. The, People's National Party, when it left office in 2007, and ended the borrowing relationship with the International Monetary Fund. And I begin there because I think it is important to note. Right. Um, and history has certainly taught us that any time the Jamaican state, Jamaican economy, finds itself in the throes of a IMF arrangement, it is the social services that are affected the most. And by social services, you mean? Education, healthcare, um, and other aspects of the social services. I don't want to probably put housing in there, but those two in particular, education right. and, and um, the National Youth Service, because in the 1980s, when we were under the management of the International Monetary Fund, um, there were cuts in education, cuts in healthcare, cuts in terms of the National Youth Service, and so on. And these are programs that impact directly on young persons. Right. And you speak about hope. Hope flows from the choices that will be made in the next um, general election because the fact of the matter is that the, the Jamaica Labour Party has accepted this notion that the IMF is a different creature from what it was in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. But if we examine very carefully the programs that are being followed by this administration, um, the only thing that has changed is that the IMF has got wise. And rather than owning the program, they say to the country, you must design the program and bring that program to us. It is the same austere approach that is taken, where the emphasis is not on growth, but on the containment and the retrenchment of cost. So in, in other words, the famous phrase which the new managing director of the IMF is also using, it's a focus on balancing the books. The concern about fall off in the social services will be the focus on balancing the lives of people. We've come to the end of part one. Be sure to join us again for the next in the series of the Youth View.